people join the next year. It started now. Good morning, everyone who is attending this uh, webinar from around the globe. I'm Vina Hausen, the program manager of uh, MPCARC Maritime Grand Challenge. I'm part of Aspire that is driving the creation of transformative technologies. So today's agenda is as follows. We, um, I will provide you an introduction to Aspire and the MPCARC Maritime Grand Challenge. We will then talk about discussion forum to facilitate teaming activities. Um, after that, we're going to take questions from the teams. And lastly, um, I will encourage the participants to go through the FAQs that we already have on our website. Now, before we look at what the MBCIRC has in store between now and 2023, I would like to talk a little bit about Aspire. Aspire is an organization that exists to bridge the gap between the lab and the real world. Based in Abu Dhabi, we are the technology program management arm of the Advanced Technology Research Council, ADRC in short. A part of ADRC, we are a sister organization to Technology Innovation Institute, or TII, which is ADRC's applied research arm. <clears throat> Our role is to drive the creation of transformative technologies. Fundamentally, we are focused on commissioning research that leads to pioneering advances, helping deliver new technologies with practical applications. We do this in a number of ways, from directing strategy to funding research, selecting partners, managing the development of research, and shaping the problem statements and international grand challenges to really drive the next great leaps in tech evolution. At Aspire, we are here for the real world. We don't do research for the sake of research. We frame our research statements with clear benefits and practical commercial applications in mind. We work in close consultation with researchers innovators and cross-sector industry stakeholders from all levels of the local and international R&D ecosystem. We ensure that our research projects have a clear path to successful application. So it's a natural and logical part of our mission to sponsor and organize grand challenges at the highest level, which can translate quick, quickly into IP and commercial success. <clears throat> As part of Aspire's mission to solve tomorrow's issues, our high profile competitions and grand challenges reach out to engage innovators and talented research teams from around the globe. To us, they offer a unique way to approach problem solving and maybe even to reach innovators we've never heard of until now. We're challenging them and you, of course, to develop groundbreaking solutions to some of the world's most pressing problems. So XPRIZE Feed the Next Billion is the very first grand challenge sponsored by Aspire. By 2050, Earth's population will be 9.7 billion. Demand for high protein products is increasing. Impact of meat production is devastating the planet, not to mention the animal suffering. This challenge seeks to address these conflicting trends. Feed the Next Billion competition was launched in December, 2020 and will run for four years. It carries a total prize purse of $15 million. This competition incentivizes innovation in chicken breast and fish fillet alternatives. The goal is to replicate and outperform conventional chicken breast and fish fillet in access, environmental sustainability, animal welfare, nutrition and health, taste and texture. Let's start by looking at the big picture becoming close to NBCRC. Robots are everywhere and autonomous systems are playing an increasingly important role across a huge range of sectors and applications. Meanwhile, they're getting more cost-effective as they become more powerful. So, so far so good, but there's a tangible gap between what they can achieve here and now and the kind of capabilities we need as a society. Through the MBCIRC Maritime Grand Challenge, 
we at Aspire are looking to bridge this gap as part of our wider remit. We are seeking to push technological boundaries, enabling robots to work more autonomously in dynamic, unstructured environments while interacting and collaborating with us and with one another. <clears throat> the MBZIRC Maritime Grand Challenge. For those of you who don't know much about us, we'll start with a little bit of background. The Mohammed bin Zayed International Robotics Challenge aims to become one of the world's largest and most prestigious international robotics competitions. Established in 2017, it's held every two years in Abu Dhabi as a real world challenge for universities, research centers, companies, and individual innovators from all over the world. <clears throat> the aim of the challenge is to inspire the development of solutions in autonomous robotics. Our previous challenges have attracted teams from across Asia, Europe, North America, and the Middle East. Today, it's at the very forefront of exploration and experimentation as we set out to find novel technologies uh, that will succeed and are resilient in dynamic and unpredictable market. From the Mohammed bin Zayed International Robotics Challenge, a new global grand challenge for 2023, as teams of pioneering innovators from around the world converge on the coast of Abu Dhabi, UAE, to take part in an ambitious robotics competition and compete for a prize purse of over 3 million US dollars. Welcome to the MBZIRC Maritime Grand Challenge. The MBZIRC Maritime Grand Challenge is a unique real-world challenge intended to inspire the creation of groundbreaking solutions in autonomous robotics focused on applications of heterogeneous forms in the air and out at sea, stimulating ideas, encouraging collaboration and pushing boundaries. This edition of MBZIRC is a system of systems challenge bringing together diverse teams with skills in robotics, navigation, communications, and autonomous technologies to unleash their creativity together. In 2023, the Maritime Grand Challenge will focus on deploying autonomous robotic technologies to address the global problems of illegal fishing, piracy, smuggling, and coastline security. This highly complex, multi-layered task involves autonomous, unmanned aerial and surface vehicles working together in a GNSS-denied environment out at sea to detect an unfriendly vessel and offload goods from it in the shortest possible time. Making it happen will require a collaborative symphony of heterogeneous technologies and unmanned platforms backed by autonomous infrastructure. The MBZIRC Maritime Grand Challenge is organized over three distinct phases. A white paper phase, open to participants from across the globe until the end of December 2021. A simulation phase, for shortlisted semi-finalists. And finally, a demonstration phase, for five finalists who compete against the clock in a real-life scenario. To succeed, you'll need to create a vibrant ecosystem of partners to propel novel solutions with deep reasoning to counter real-world problems. Now, the call for participation is open. To register your interest and battle with the leading pioneers of autonomous robotics, visit us at mbzirc.com and let the Maritime Grand Challenge begin. Visit mbzirc.com for more. That was our promo video. For more details. Now, I'm delighted to set out the details of our very next Global Grand Challenge, our third edition, the MBCIRC Maritime Grand Challenge. It is a unique real world competition designed to inspire the creation of groundbreaking solutions in autonomous robotics in air and out at sea stimulating ideas, encouraging collaboration, and pushing boundaries. In 2023, the MBCIRC Maritime Grand Challenge will deploy autonomous robotic technologies to address the very real and present global problems of illegal fishing, piracy, smuggling, and coastline security. 
It's a highly complex, multi-layered task involving autonomous, uh, involving autonomous aerial and surface vehicles working together in a GNSS denied environment of the coast of Abu Dhabi. So these, this system will work together to identify a target vessel and offload goods from it in the shortest possible time. What makes this different from other grand challenges? It's the first ever challenge to involve heterogeneous collaboration among unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned surface vehicles. Are you and your team up for the challenge? Let's start by looking at the incentives, the prizes. Our total prize pot is $3.5 million and is designed not only to reward our first, second and third place finishers, but all those who complete our simulation phase and advance to the final round. Our demonstration phase will share a fund of $500,000 split equally between all the finalists that will proceed to the demonstration phase. Because we believe in teamwork, collaboration, and sharing the benefits of innovation, any team that accepts demonstration uh, prize money will provide us Aspire with non-exclusive, non perpetual, and royalty-free access to IP, including the right to sublicense it to third parties. As far as the funding and sponsorship is concerned, we at Aspire will provide no sponsorship of equipment to teams except for the provision of USV and funding towards the procurement or construction or upgrading of robotic arm that will be used in the final demonstration. <clears throat> now, um, the task itself, I'm going to talk the final demonstration uh, task in detail. So um, the participants have to bring the UAVs themselves. The number of UAVs is going to be between five to 20. Aspire is going to provide a USV. Um, the details of the USVs will be provided shortly on our website. We are in the process of finalizing it. And um, along with the USV, Aspire will provide a funding of up to $50,000 towards robotic arm and the mounting mechanism. So uh, how the participants use this is up to them. Of course, they have to provide us proof and get approval from us to use this um, uh, effectively. Uh, so you can use this 50,000 for either procuring robotic arms for upgrading an existing off-the-shelf robotic arm or for creating a robotic arm uh, from scratch. Uh, if you like, you can also use it towards multiple robotic arms that will be used um, in this challenge. So the challenge itself, uh, the UAV and the USV system will be launched from the start gate and an intelligence report will be provided to the system few hours prior to the final demonstration. I cannot yet say how many hours in advance, let's just say a few hours. And this intelligence has to be fed into the system. Um, the clock starts and the entire system is launched in the inspection area. So the inspection area is about 10 square kilometers. The launch point is going to be on the shore. USB will be in water and the UAVs will be on the land. <clears throat> so once you launch the system, the UAVs will have to go search the water to find a target vessel or target vessels that match the description of the intelligence report provided to them. Once they find a target vessel that matches the description provided in the intelligence report, uh, the system has to activate a video stream to the operator. And in this video stream, the target vessel has to be clearly marked along with the Boolean for the operator to say yes or no. If the operator says no, it is not the correct target vessel, then the team gets a time penalty. And if the operator says yes, the team can proceed to the intervention task. So the video feed has to continue. The uh, UAVs uh, will have to look for 
objects for intervention. The first object to be intervened will be a small object, which will be about one kilogram in weight. The, uh, either one UAV or multiple UAVs have to coordinate and pick up this, uh, sorry, the video stream continues. I'm just taking one step back. The video stream has to continue. Um, the UAVs have to identify and mark the small object clearly in the video feed, um, accompanied by a Boolean for the operator to say yes or no. If the operator confirms, well, okay, um, uh, the system can proceed to the intervention task. If the operator says no, they get a time penalty and they, they have to keep relocating. So once the operator confirms, the UAV swarms or a single UAV have to pick up the small object, which is about one kilogram in weight, pick it up and put it on the USV uh, platform. <clears throat> now, uh, once this activity is done, the, the video feed has to continue and the system has to look for a larger object on the target vessel. And um, in the video feed, again, the larger object has to be clearly marked along with the Boolean for the operator to say yes or no. If the operator uh, does not confirm that this is the correct object, then of course the team gets a time penalty. If they do identify that it's the correct object, they can proceed with the intervention. Uh, the larger object is going to be <clears throat> up to 10 kilograms in weight. The UAVs have to collaborate with each other to move the larger object from, let's say point A on the target vessel to point B. Point B being more convenient for the USV, <coughs> USV and the robotic arm to reach into the target vessel, pick it up and put it on the USV platform. So the moment the larger object is picked up from the target vessel and placed on the USV platform, uh, the clock stops. And whichever team can accomplish this entire activity in the shortest amount of time, the maximum amount of time being 15 minutes, including the time penalty, um, will be the winner. So now we are going to see further details. <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, there are going to be three activities, inspection, intervention, and uh, sorry, they're going to be uh, two activities uh, that are part of this challenge. One is inspection and the second one is intervention. And the scoring is based on speed and accuracy. So you have to make sure that the objects are picked up from the target vessel and put on the USB platform. If you lose the objects in the water, it's not uh, um, considered as uh, task completed. So we have three phases uh, in this competition. The first part is white paper and um, the call for white paper is open and we have the white paper submission requirements on our website. Please go through it. Uh, up to 20 uh, semifinalists from the white paper phase will proceed to simulation phase. And up to five finalists that that are picked from the simulation phase will proceed to the final demonstration phase. So we welcome applications from teams around the world. And that means any team with skills, resources, and knowledge to participate and succeed. We're particularly interested in hearing from universities, research centers, innovative businesses, and pioneering individuals. It's probably that many individual institutions or organizations may lack all of the necessary skills in one place. So we are actively encouraging the formation of collaborative partnerships that bring talents and technologies together. <clears throat> in the meantime, my colleagues at Aspire will be sharing information and facilitating team building through a variety of outreach activities between now and end of the year. So MBZIRC has also launched a community. So every person who has successfully completed the registration would have received an email with an invite to join the would have received an invite to join the MBZIRC Maritime Grand Challenge community. So in this community, you can seek out partners that can collaborate with you to form a stronger team. Let's say you are an expert in um, object localization and you need somebody who has USB technology and possibly somebody who can provide you with some more UAVs uh, to help you accomplish this task. So you can go on this community and look for people who can collaborate with you. 
uh, but just uh, try and be mindful not to reveal any proprietary information. The MBCRC community is just, just for you to get in touch with each other and any technical discussions, please take it one-on-one -on -one or offline or outside the community. So are you and your team ready for the challenge? I'll be now taking questions. I'll just open the chat window. Okay. So we're starting with the very first question. Please bear with me. Uh, our moderator, Tom, is not available today. Okay. So I have received some questions in the chat window and some questions in Q&A. So I will first take the Q&A. Can you tell me what we do here and what we learn here? Uh, well, you will, uh, I, I just explained the entire demonstration activity. Um, what you will learn from this is a lot, how to navigate UAVs in a GNSS denied environment um, and picking up objects from a target vessel and placing it on a USV requires collaboration between two different types of autonomous vehicles, one in the air and one in water. And I think there's a great deal of learning here. Somebody just asked me, I have a couple of questions. Could I please ask directly here? Yes, please ask here. Please type your questions in the uh, uh, Q&A box. That would be helpful because I'm going to go through this one first. Uh, next question, for each team, what is the duration of the competition or mission so that we can expect what is the flying time for the drones. So the maximum time for the demonstration activity as of now is 50 minutes. If you can accomplish it under 50 minutes, that is desired. The, the team that accomplishes the entire demonstration task in the shortest amount of time is a winner. So somebody says, I have registered, but have not yet gained access to the community discussion forum. Okay, this is a bit concerning. Please send us an email at talk to us at mbzirc.com with your registration details, and I will have our marketing team um, fix this for you. I cannot see the name here. It just says anonymous attendee. So whoever has posted this question, please send us an email with your um, registration details. Is there going to be active jamming in the contest area? Well, I'm not going to answer this question. The entire demonstration has to happen in a GNSS denied environment. So you have to make sure that you're not using the GNSS or GPS signal in any way. Next question, will the starting point be at shore or from the middle of the 10 square kilometer area? The starting point will be on the shore. Can we put radio beacons on the beach? No, you're not allowed to put radio beacons on the beach. Sorry, I forgot to mention during the description of the demonstration activity that <clears throat> Only intrasystem communication is allowed. That means the system between the USV and the UAV swarm. The only extra system communication that is allowed is the video stream that goes from the system to the operator. Putting a beacon on the beach will, will count as extra system communication. So this is not allowed. Next question. 
Okay, this person has posted five questions and I'm just going to take them one by one. Uh, will there be overhanging payloads to be unloaded? No, there will not be any overhanging payloads. All the payloads will be inside the vessel. Will the payloads be free to be listed? Yes, the payloads will be free to be lifted. Can the payload be inside the shelter of a boat? If the payload is going to be inside the shelter of a boat, it could be. Can the target vessel try to avoid the searching UAVs? So um, if the target vessel is going to escape the UAVs when they are searching it, so it will not actively try to evade. So this is not a requirement. So you can assume that they will not, uh, the, the target vessels will not start driving away or will have some sort of a, uh, avoidance behavior. So you can assume that once you've found the target vessel, it will continue with its regular behavior, which is moving at a particular, uh, a particular speed. Or we can, uh, yeah, we can also try and make sure that once you found the target vessel, it has minimum movement. So it will definitely not evade. So just to answer your question clearly, how to ask questions that are very specific to our idea, which we don't want to reveal. So questions specific to your idea, please do not ask, uh, please do not ask us. We do not want to know your idea. So any um, idea that you have, please put it in your white paper. And we are not going to give you clarifications with respect to very specific technical questions. And also, we do have a panel of experts who are our advisors, but we do not know how to solve this challenge. So it is very likely that we don't know the answer to your questions. Next. Um, what will be the arena size? 10 square kilometers. It is not arena. We'll be conducting this in open water, in landlocked open water off the coast of Abu Dhabi. I can't register my account. Can I have direct email address or direct contact? So <clears throat> please send an email to talk to us at mbzirc.com uh, with this concern, and I will. Um, talk to our marketing and outreach team to have this problem solved for you. Next, next question. Do you provide some plugins, for example, gazebo simulator in order to simulate the behavior of a vessel due to swell of the sea? So we will be providing a simulation environment that will also model the sea. So as I stated earlier, we, we will be, uh, sorry, as I stated in one of our previous webinars, the um, challenge will be conducted in C state between zero, zero to three. And this will also be modeled in our simulation environment. So all the semifinalists that will proceed to simulation phase are free to use this open source simulation environment that will provide the behavior of the USV that we will be providing and also the uh, environment, simul uh, also the demonstration environment. What kind of objects will we be picking and lifting? Okay. Um, just give me one second. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the kind of objects you will be picking and lifting. So this question is coming again and again. We are deliberately trying not to give complete details of the type of objects that will be picked up. So we want to see the innovation of picking up any type of object uh, in your white paper. So um, make certain educated assumptions as to uh, what the objects could be. The smaller object is going to be about one kilo and the larger object is going to be 10 kilos. It could be a box, it could be a log, or it could be a bag that will have some master's papers for the smaller object. And the larger object can again be a big box or, 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 a, uh, or a bunch of objects that are tied together in, in, a, um, in, a, in, a, 
in a cloth or in a mesh or um, or a big bag that 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 can be picked up. So um, we're deliberately trying to avoid giving out exact details of how the object will look like because we want to see various types of innovations uh, that that you guys come up with uh, in the white paper phase to see how you can provide a possibility to lift any kind of object. <clears throat> so the next question, is the transmission of telemetry data from each individual UAV allowed? Um, I don't really understand the question. Maybe I lack the technical skills to understand and answer this. So I'm going to, um, if you can, please do me a favor and send this question to talk to us at mbzirc.com. I will discuss with our uh, technical advisors and, and send you an answer on this one. And if, if this qualifies to go on our FAQ, we will also put it on our FAQ. So um, just to answer this, this particular question at a high level, so information exchange between UAV swarm and the USV, intrasystem communication of any sort is allowed provided they abide by the local regulations, if that answers your question. Next question, will be the simulation on ROS or ROS2? Um, it is very highly likely that it will be ROS, but I'm not sure yet if it will be ROS or ROS2. So this is for the simulation phase. So before the beginning of simulation phase, all these questions will be answered or you will get a very clear idea as to what, what uh, the simulation environment is going to be. So the next person has asked three questions. I'll just go through them one by one. In the final phase, how will we receive the provided USV? Should we go to UAE, UAE to use it and ship it to our own place at our own cost? Or will it be sent to our respective country and city? If so, will the shipping fee be provided? So we are going to provide the USV and the associated shipping costs. So the USVs will be shipped from their manufacturer to each of the finalists. We will provide training to each of the finalists how they can use the USV and basic package for, um, for navigation. Of course, no payloads will be mounted on the USV. That is part of your job. And once uh, and these USVs will be available at your disposal for nine months during the development phase. And for the final demonstration, we will also take care of the shipping of the USV from the competitors uh, or the finalist location to Abu Dhabi. Yeah, only the USV, not the payload. So this question, I hope I have answered this question clearly. Will the provided USV come with the power and steering system for unmanned operation or do we have to customize it? So the USV will come with power and steering system. It, it has a very good battery pack. We are also exploring providing solar panels so that you don't have to charge the um, uh, USV battery externally. Um, once the USV details are uh, available in full, we will put it up on our website. So just bear with us for some time. We are providing a very nice machine. <clears throat> next, given the next question, given that the mission allows, given that the mission allows no GNSS signals, will all the USV and UAVs have to return to the starting location of the mission? So um, the clock starts um, once the uh, once all the uh, once the entire system is launched uh, for the inspection phase, and the clock stops once the larger object is placed onto the USV platform. Uh, of course, they all have to come back to the uh, start gate in order for us to collect and return it to them. Yeah, you want your stuff back. So, uh, but that that time will not be counted as part of the competition, not, not yet. So if there is any change to this one, we will let you know. 
what will be the size next question what will be the size of smaller objects as large objects are of the size of 10 kg so i have said the weight of the smaller object is up to 1 kg and the larger object is up to 10 kg so the size and dimensions i'm not going to reveal it at this point so just um, make educated assumptions of various sizes and shapes of objects that could be in in this um, in this weight range i have given enough uh, possibilities already next question the pdf says white paper submission deadline is for 30 december 2021 6 pm gst but in the presentation you mentioned 31st january 2022 which is correct okay um <clears throat> i think you're probably referring to one of the old pdfs we recently uh, took a decision about um, about two weeks ago to extend the white paper submission deadline to 31st January 2022. We had a lot of requests from participants telling us the amount of time required for writing the white paper for a challenge of this scale is too short. And in the best interest of encouraging more people to write good white papers, we have extended the white paper submission deadline to 31st January 2022. So this is the correct date. Next question. The communication is still not completely clear. How do the UAVs get their starting signal if no communication is allowed? <clears throat> okay, uh, this is a very good question. Thank you for asking this. So um, we are going to provide a particular timestamp where the UAVs can be launched. As of now, you can make this assumption for the white paper. We will say, okay, let's say, um, we get the entire system on the shore and we say, okay, when the clock hits 9 a.m., everything has to be launched into the water. This is just an example. It doesn't have to be 9 a.m. It could be 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or whatever. Yeah. Next question. What are the communication constraints? Example, frequency, bandwidth, transmitting power, if an interim communication system will be developed. Well, um, so uh, the telecommunications and digital government authority is the regulator responsible for management of the radio spectrum in the UAV. So uh, please refer to their website to further, uh, for further information and contact them if uh, need be for any additional information. So their website is TDRA dot gov dot ae forward slash en for english next question will the starting point be at shore or from the yeah i think i've answered this question next question is there any military background related to the complete competition well um this is a purely commercial com uh, competition we have only commercial uh, um applications in our mind. So no military background related to the competition. <clears throat> Next question. Are teams associated with the military allowed to participate? Well, uh, you have to figure out for yourself if you're allowed to participate or not. So um, do due diligence to figure out if your participation in this competition is allowed or not depending on the country or the organization you're associated with. So I'm through with, with the questions that are in q and I'm quickly going to go through the questions that have appeared in chat window. A uh, question here. How will UAVs of different teams be deconflicted so they do not hit each other? or each team will have a different time slot. Yes, each team is going to have a different time slot. We are not going to ask all the five teams to do the demonstration at the same time. Each team will get a different time slot. As of now, we are considering that each team will do the demonstration activity three times just to remove the luck factor and any disadvantage caused by uh, bad weather conditions. So yeah, you don't have to worry that your UAVs will be um, conflicting with the UAVs. Uh, of other team members.
Uh, next question. Just give me a second. I'm trying to uh, open the chat window again, which I accidentally closed. Yeah. Okay, somebody has asked a question. Can you please elaborate the role of manipulator? I'm guessing that you mean uh, the robotic manipulation arm. The role of the robotic manipulation arm is to be able to reach into the target vessel, yeah, and pick up an object from the target vessel and put it on the USB platform. Let's say this is the target vessel and this is the USB platform. The robotic arm is going to be mounted here. So it's going to reach into the target vessel, pick up the object and put it on the, on the USB platform. Sorry for the hand, hand gesture. I hope you understood it. Well, I think we're done with the questions for today. Any more questions? Uh, we still have 20 minutes. So if you do not have any more questions, I would uh, end this webinar here. I, I will allow one more minute. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad somebody just said thank you for answering the question. So um, I really appreciate the feedback. I'm glad that I was able to answer your questions. Okay, I think we're going to wrap up for today. Thank you very much. I wish all of you a very great day ahead and see you hopefully in the next webinar. And if you have any questions or clarifications, uh, our webinars are as of now bi-weekly. If you have any questions in between, do send us an email to talk to us at mbzirc.com and uh, um, I, I, I will answer your questions there. Okay, I'm getting a couple of questions again now. So I think I will take them because we still have time. Uh, the question is, do we need to retune the payload? Um, so I don't understand what you mean. Uh, the payloads that are mounted on the UAVs will have to, are your responsibility. It's up to you what you do with them. The USB is going to be provided to you without any payload. So, um, so this question is kind of obsolete because we, we are not providing any payload to you. So you have to um, do whatever is necessary with your payload in order to um, accomplish the task. Uh, there's another question. Will the recordings of the webinars be available so that I can share them with the team members? Yes, so all our webinars are available on our website. I'm just going to share my screen one more time and show you where these webinars are available. Uh, please bear with me for a minute. Okay, thank you for this question. So th this gives me an opportunity to, okay, you, you, this is our website. So right now there is uh, a very important page called as FAQ. We have answered, sorry, I just clicked it. We have answered many important technical uh, questions related to the challenge here. Please do go through them and we are updating them on a constant basis. <clears throat> and all the online webinars are also available here with the date stamp. And you can see that um, the older webinars um, have uh, fewer details. And as and when we have gotten more questions, we have also answered them on our webinar. The last one that has been posted as 9th November, 9th November webinar, I think we did one more after this that will also be posted shortly. And this webinar will also go on our website. So to answer your question, yes, we are going to post the webinars uh, online.
So uh, I, I think I answered this. Uh, there's another question that says, is the USB required to come back to the start position after retrieving all the objects? So uh, the timer for the demonstration activity stops the moment you pick up the second object and put it on the USB platform. So that's, that's all the time we are counting for the competition. The time taken to come back to the starting point is uh, is of course necessary because you want to get all your uh, objects back to the shore. Uh, as of now, for the white paper phase, you can assume that the timer starts once the system is launched and the timer stops once the larger object is placed onto the um, USB platform. Next question. Can you explain the IP transfer details? Does Aspire get a license to source code binaries or something else? So um, all the IP that is developed for solving the tasks in this challenge that are developed as a part of taking part in this challenge um, will be provided to Aspire if you accept the prize money. And we get six months time to negotiate exclusive rights. So let me just take one step back and explain this a little bit better. So uh, let's say you start innovating for this challenge from the date of white paper, and uh, let's say you win the competition. So all the innovation that has happened in the process of taking part in this challenge from the date you from the date you started writing the white paper till the final demonstration where you win the challenge, is uh, comes under um, this agreement. So um, Aspire will get non-exclusive rights to the IP if you ac accept the prize money. And um, Aspire will have six months time to negotiate exclusive rights to the IP with you. I really hope that's clear now. <clears throat> So I really don't know what W forward slash A means. Uh, so could you please um, elaborate prior technology which we developed before? So if you have a prior technology or a background IP that you're using in this competition, it has to be specified very clearly uh, in the white paper. So that will help us understand what was developed by you for this particular competition and what already existed when you started working on this. Our next question, will you ship the USV to all teams advance, advance to the final round? Okay, so the way it's going to happen is at the end of simulation phase, we are going to evaluate all the semifinalists and we pick up to five finalist teams. So each of these five finalist teams, if they agreed to proceed to the final demonstration phase and they agree to sign the contract with respect to the IP, what I just um, discussed, uh, each of them will get a USB. So we will take care of shipping the USB to your location and we will provide you training on using the USB, how to assemble it. So the USB is going to be modular. I'm not going to give any details to you right now because you don't need it for white, white paper phase and it will be revealed to you in due course. So we will send somebody who will provide you training to use the USB. So um, don't, don't, don't be worried about how to ship the USB, how do we manage it, how do we learn about it. So you're, you're covered well. We will take care of shipping of the USB to your location and back to Abu Dhabi. You have to take care about your UAVs and the payloads. Um, and yeah, we are also covering the cost with respect to shipping of the USB. Okay, there are a few more questions in the Q&A window. <clears throat> A communication with the operator must be possible. Example, the transmission of the video feed. Is the communication link then routed through the USB? So how you're going to route the communication link 
from the UAV swarm plus USB system to the operator is completely up to you. Do you want to send it through USB? You can do it. Do you want to send it through multiple UAVs that are lined up because of distance or whatever issues? I don't know. I'm not a technical expert in this field. Uh, it is up to you. So uh, use your creativity, um, see where the limitations of your systems are and uh, you, you know approximately how big the area is. So come up with a way that the video feed reaches uh, from the UAV that is on top of the target vessel to the operator. So we are going to have one base station very close to the start gate. So uh, the, even if the operator is sitting somewhere else, we are going to take care of bouncing the signal from the base station to the operator. You just have to make sure that the video feed goes from, from the target vessel to the base station, which is close to the launch gate. <clears throat> so yeah, we have 10 more minutes left. Any more questions? Well, um, you have to return the USV back to us uh, with respect to the robotic arm that you will mount on the USV. It, it will be on case-to-case -case basis. Let's say you have used our $50,000 and you have also put in your own money to develop a robotic arm, then we have to see how we go about it. But the USB has to be returned back to us. So once you come to Abu Dhabi for final demonstration phase, you can take all the payloads that you have mounted on your uh, on the USB back with you, but the vessel will stay with us. We are not providing any payloads that will go on the USB. The payloads on the USB will have to be mounted by you. So I'm just going to give a few more minutes for participants that might have any more questions. Okay, there is another question. Yeah, uh, this is again, if this uh, webinar will be shared online, we will post it on our website. So I would just like to ask a question to all the participants here. Um, how many of you are already working on your white paper and are looking forward to submit it? Could you just post a message on the chat window? I would really appreciate it. This is just for me. So a few, uh, few days ago or a few weeks ago, we had sent a survey, a Google survey, along with the announcement of extension of white paper submission deadline. Um, I request all of you to fill this survey for us just to get an insight into um, uh, you and your team a little bit more. That's just for us. This will not be used for judging or anything. This is basically for us to get an understanding as to um, who are participating in it and if, if people are actually working towards the white paper phase. So I'm, I'm seeing some very encouraging responses here. Four people have, have um, replied. No, no, the fifth one just started. We are, we are in idea phase. We are in design phase. We will start shortly. We are working on the white paper already. Um, 
We are yet to decide. The format changed too much compared to the previous MBCRC, which I really liked a lot. Well, uh, there is a reason behind the change of the format. The previous MBCRC was conducted by a university and um, the bar was um, basically to encourage university research. And now the goal of Aspire is to make this one of the leading robotics competitions in the world. And we want to solve grand challenges with this. As a result, it is uh, a very difficult challenge. The bar is very high. Of course, it is high enough for, for us to accelerate innovation. And the model is we are providing a platform for teams to collaborate with each other. This is where we open up siloed innovation. Everybody is innovating in UAV and USV space by providing this platform where, uh, where teams can get in touch with each other and form stronger teams. We are bringing the siloed innovations together and actually provide uh, an advancement in innovation uh, and accelerate the innovation. So this is the new model of MBZIRC that Aspire um, has designed. So um, I'm sorry that you like the previous uh, model much better, but uh, this is what it is right now. And this is indeed um, uh, designed, keeping in mind faster acceleration uh, in innovation. We still have four minutes. So I will just wait if anybody has any more questions. And if you are working on white paper, keep the chat messages coming just for me to get an idea how many people are working on this. Great, so I think I'm going to wrap up today's session. Thank you very much for participating and thank you very much for your excellent questions. Um, I apologize for not answering some of the questions. So please do me a favor and send us an email at talk to us at mbcrc.com with that question. Uh, I will do my best to get an answer uh, back to you. Uh, and if um, we decide to put it up on FAQ, I will, uh, I will also reply back and then inform the same to you. So uh, all the next webinars are, a lot, uh, are announced on our website. And also, uh, like I shared on our website, there is a, a tab called online webinar. We are going to announce when the next webinar is going to be. Uh, so please stay tuned to that. And we are on LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. So tune into any of our social media channels and you will also get to know about the uh, date of the next webinar. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a great day. See you. Bye.